Okay, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to try to talk about the logic of how a DC motor works. If you haven't done so, you might want to take a look at the blank notes that are attached on the website as well, because we're going to be going through those. Now, at the top of this note, what you're going to see is you're going to see this blank uh, diagram here to try to describe what's going on. Now, what you'll see is on either side here, you've got a north and a south. This is supposed to represent a bar magnet. It has a fixed north end and a fixed south end. And in the center here, we've got right here a power source. And what this power source is, this power source attaches to what we're going to call brushes here. Okay. What I want you to note is that there's not a direct connection between the brush and the circle right here. They're just sort of touching each other. Okay. Now the brushes touch here and allow electricity to flow through this wire right here. And what do we call a wire that has electricity flowing through it? Well, it can turn into an electromagnet. Now the key behind all this is this piece in the center here and it is called a split ring commutator. This is the key for all the logic here. What I want you to notice is that right here we have a gap. Oops, sorry. We have a gap right here. What this means is that if you have the brush touch here in the gap, electricity cannot flow because there's no pathway for the electricity to flow. Okay, that's going to become really important in the next few slides. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the slides right here. And at the bottom of your page, you'll see this is a diagram right here. And it's going to ask you to draw on the electrical flow. Now, as a reminder, what we're going to be using for all these notes here is we're going to be using the left-hand rule. Okay, now what this means is we have our battery right here. Here's our negative end and here's our positive end. As a result of that, electricity will flow along here and it's going to flow through the brush. Now, because it's touching here at the brush, it's going to continue to go through this circle. And it's going to flow along here until it flows down. Flows up, flows down. Flows up, flows down. Then the electricity is going to flow along here. And what I want you to notice with this piece right here is that the brush is considered to be beneath this circle right here. So there's a big gap between them. So the electricity can't flow down like this because there's a big height difference between them. Instead, the electricity will flow along here, come up here, and flow down here. The electricity will continue to flow and go back towards the battery. Now let's focus on this part, this piece here with A and B. We can see all our arrows are, are pointing down. Because they're all pointing down, if we use our left-hand rule, we'll notice that the electromagnet has a north end right here and a south end right here. Now if you've got a north end near a north end, you're going to start to see repulsion. So it could swing to the left or to the right, but because it's going to take less energy for it to swing to the right, we're going to have it, or sorry, swing clockwise or counterclockwise, we'll have it swing in this direction. Okay, because the north end of the electromagnet wants to repel the north end of the bar magnet. So now we're going to go to the next slide. What I'm going to do with this diagram here between this and the next slide is the A and B are going to rotate 90 degrees. So originally, our A end was right here, and we can see it's rotated to this spot right here. So yet again, what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to draw on our electrical flow. So the electricity flow along here, flow through the brush, touch on here, and then it's going to flow this way. So it'll flow along here, continue back up, flow through the split and commutator, come down here, and come back to the top. So yet again, we're going to use our left-hand rule. And we're going to see that yet again, the north end is right here and the south end is right here. This is exactly what we saw in the previous slide as well. But what you'll see is that this north end right here is closer to the south end. So what you're going to want to see happen is you're going to see rotation occur, but this isn't due to repulsion like last time, it's now due to attraction. So what should happen is that it should rotate an additional 90 degrees, it should, or close to 90 degrees, have the north and south near to each other, and then the rotation stops. Now let's go to our diagram right here. You can see our A was right here, and we've rotated this way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw in our electric current again. Now this is where the split ring commutator is important. If you'll remember on the previous two slides, <clears throat> The, this top brush would end up touching the A side. This time it's touching the B side. How does that affect things? Well, if you follow the flow of the electricity right here, we will see that the electricity continues to flow through here and go back. Which side is the north end now? The north end now is now the B side, and the A side has become the south end. That's the key behind the split ring commutator. 
Because it's a split ring commutator, it means the electricity doesn't flow between A and B. A and B are separate entities. In this particular case, the top brush is touching the B side, which means the electricity is flowing in this direction, which causes the north end to be on the B side. So what are we going to see happen? We're no longer seeing attraction occur, we're going to see repulsion occur, and it will continue to rotate. The key with the split ring commutator is that every 180 degrees, the, the direction of electricity within the electromagnet flips. It goes from having the north side being the A side to the north side being the B side, and then back to the A side, and back to the B side. And this is going to keep flipping back and forth as long as we have electricity flow through here.